we realized that the best way to do a better AI was to use living neurons. Biological processors are made of living cells. This has never been done in, in the history. This is basically what is running ChatGPT, for instance. It was taking several kilowatts of power. Your brain is 20 watts for 100 billion of neurons. We used more sophisticated versions of these artificial neurons. What's about the ethical issue? The picturesque town of Veve, Switzerland, blends natural landscapes with urban fabric. It's home to the headquarters of one of the most visionary biotech companies working to create a so-called living computer. Is it possible to combine the computational power of computers with the efficiency of the human brain? Final Spark is a Swiss biocomputing startup that is the first in the world to build a living processor, creating a bioprocessor capable of learning while consuming over a million times less energy than conventional silicon systems. What is it human brain organoid? It's basically a small part of nervous tissue made of neuron coming from uh, human beings. What is it your human brain project? So, uh, first, when you talk about human brain project, this is first a European project, okay? Um, and uh, that somehow inspired us, okay? But it's not really a project related to human brain, actually. Um, there are many people uh, doing uh, human brain organoids in the world and in Europe also. Uh, this is not, as such, this is not something um, even, I would say, very advanced, okay? Uh, what is a bit special in our company is that what we are trained to do with this brain organoids is to use them for computation. So it's the goal that we have and the work that we do which is original. You see what's behind the corner? Well, <laughs> I don't know if I see what's behind the corner, but that's right that uh, it's a very original thinking uh, to think that human neurons can be used for computation. How do you collect human cells? Okay, uh, we buy human cells from companies that are specialized to produce them and they are pluripotent stem cells so they usually they come from uh, fibroblasts so uh, skin cells that are reprogrammed to become pluripotent so it, this means that they can become whatever type of cells we How is it possible to create the neuron cells from using you know skin cells yeah, exactly. It's because we um, there are methodologies that we can use to uh, de-differentiate the skin cells, so bring them back to the pluripotent state, and then from this point we can uh, differentiate them in neurons. So give them um, specific molecules in the culture medium from uh, uh, pluripotent stem cells and then we make sure that they are pluripotent so we check some markers to make sure that they will be able to differentiate in uh, neurons and astrocyte and uh, other type of cells in the brain and then we yeah we culture them with special uh, molecules that will induce the cells will tell the cells to become a neuron so we are in the cell culture room and uh, it's the place where we grow the brain organoids and they are in the incubator where we found uh, like um, uh, precise temperature and CO2 concentration. Inside of these plates we have different type of organoids that we are growing. First of all actually we um, grow them in a special plate that allow them to create a 3D structure and then uh, step by step we give different type of uh, reagents or molecules as we, we can say that will tell them to, to become a specific type of cells and also they will reorganize in uh, structures that are similar to part of the brains. 
the function will be similar to a um, fetal brain. Some are in the orbital shaker because the shaking uh, helps the nutrients and the oxygens to enter inside the organoid. How do you keep your neuron cells alive? So we give them a special um, solution. So it's, a, it's called a cell culture medium that contains nutrients and uh, that help them to, to live. How do you keep this organoid alive in that system? Alors, as you can see, there is, uh, or maybe not in really in the picture, but uh, we have a fluidic system below. So, uh, so we have pipes and bring the, the medium actually. So we have pump. And um, so the medium is really flowing below the, um, the organoid. So the organoid exactly will be on this on, on the top of uh, so all the time they are feeding. Yeah, all the time, yes. So uh, with this system, we can keep them alive. Usually uh, one, two, three. It can be more sometimes. It's but mostly it's like two weeks. You can see the um, the pump uh, the pump speed actually of all the MEA. So for example, you can see that uh, we are running at around I don't know uh, 30 or 50 microliter per minute. How long time you can keep these cells alive? One year, two years, three years? We managed to keep them all, almost three years alive. How we can connect that an organoid with your neuron platform? We put the organoid on top of the electrodes and we record their activities. What do we can see? So this actually it's through you when you go to the, the website you can see the live actually so these pictures so we have four different MEA so actually it's a close up on this part Okay, MEA is multi electrode array. Okay. So because there is a lot of different electrodes that you can see maybe better on this picture, you see this little. What you can see it's uh, we have five MEA. So the black one is a, a, a new one that you are trying now. But what you can see on the website is the um, that one, the clear one. Right? You see this one on the bottom. The two on the bottom. So different. So that one, it means you put one or two organoid here, so you can record from eight electrodes. They will be independent. We call this it's a membrane actually with a, with a hole in the middle. Uh, we call it confetti, uh, but um, why well, it's just a membrane? Actually, it helps to to for me to put in the middle the. Um, uh, the organoid and also it helps to uh, to reduce the noise. Why did you start this project? Why biocomputing? Why so futuristic vision of the reality? The, the first thing, you know, I, I'm an engineer, so I always try to solve problems, okay, and take the best solution for a given problem. Okay, and initially. When we started to work on this, you know, I have a PhD in signal processing, basically mathematics, nothing to do with neurobiology. Okay, so I can tell you if I could have avoided to learn uh, an entire new field, I would have preferred. But when we started the company, we worked a lot with artificial neural networks. Artificial neural networks are simulations of neurons. This is basically what is running ChatGPT, for instance. Okay, and all generative AI. And we used more sophisticated versions of these artificial neurons. And they were consuming so much energy that we realized it would be impossible to scale this. Like, like with 100 simulated neurons, it, would take, it was taking several kilowatts of power. Imagine, your brain is 20 watts for 100 billion of neurons. 86 billion neurons we have in a human brain. Yeah. Uh, using 20 watts for calculation. That's the reason that you uh, decided to open that company? No, the main reason of op uh, opening this company was first to do fundamental research in AI. 
And in the course of this fundamental research, we realized that the best way to do a better AI was to use living neurons. What's the difference between biological and classical processor? Between biological and classical processor, well, biological processors are made of living cells, which is totally disruptive indeed. This has never been done in, in the history. I know that I, I saw your butterfly experiment. What is it? Yeah, the butterfly experiment um, is a way to show in the browser, internet browser of a user, uh, how he can interact directly from his internet browser in 3D with a brain gathering sitting in Switzerland in our lab. This is a visual illustration of this. And you see this butterfly uh, flying in three dimension. Uh, you can actually control its direction. The, the idea is when the, the butterfly see the light, so it's yep. the, this, blue, uh, this big blue dots, you send stimulation. And if the butterfly uh, reply to the stimulation, you go straight. So it means you go to the light. And if not, so you are uh, randomly uh, going everywhere. And when the, he, he replies, so you can see actually here that after each stimulation, this big line, you can see that there is some reply. So probably a lot of neurons are discussing uh, when you saw this big wave, actually we call burst because there are probably more than one neuron that are sending information. So it's essentially here we see a lot of communication. You have a communication with organoids, right? Yes. Yeah, uh, yes, exactly. We have no, but not between, between each of them. So, like, for example, here you see again a burst of a lot of uh, neurons. They are processing the information. Yes. So, so how do you enforce such neurons to process such information? Yes. So they, yes. Dopamine. So, in the way you, the words that you use here, uh, makes a lot of sense to me. Okay. Uh, if you talk about processing information and enforcing a behavior, okay, uh, one. So this is called learning, okay, enforcing a behavior, okay, and this is the main challenge that everybody, every researcher in the uh, researcher in the world of biocomputing has to challenge today, okay. Um, so your question: so one way that we are indeed pursuing here is to use, for instance, dopamine to reward the brain algorithm if it does what we expect. But there are other strategies which are used by the, by others. Do you have any progress? very slow progress, okay, because we need to confirm experiment. Even if something works once, it doesn't mean it works at all, okay. We are engineers more than scientists in the sense that we want something that works. What's about the ethical issue? So, you know, first we are scientists, okay. Yeah. Uh, any questions about <laughs> science? Uh, I may be able to answer, probably, actually not. Most of the important questions in science we are not able to answer, but some of the technical questions I may be answer. Uh, now, if you think about ethical questions, this is really out of the field of expertise of Final Spark. Um, and for this, uh, we recognize this is a concern. And what we did is that we made a number of contact with universities and ethicians because they are experts in this field of ethics. People, they are, this is their job actually to study. And what we do is that we went also to conference in November last year, for instance, to present in an ethic conference to eticians what we were doing. So that those people who are experts in this can start to think what would be the implication of using living neurons for computation. Why human cells? Yeah, that's a very good question, actually. If you think about computation, probably rat cells could, could also work very well, okay? The thing is, when you create a startup, you'll never know what are going to be um, the outcome. Sometimes you may discover something along the way that is very useful. And one of the things that we could de discover along the way could have therapeutic applications and I'd better have therapeutic applications for human beings than for rats. The moment that shocked you, that you uh, 
that surprised you positively here in this final spot? Well, when we were able to record some uh, activity from neurons, it was already a fantastic uh, thing. When we were able to tow cells you know, from liquid nitrogen and multiply them ourselves, we were able to see some reaction mm -hmm. of the nervous tissue to dopamine and the that waves. Yeah, yeah. We, see, we saw some activity which is typical induced by the release of dopamine. This was one, one, I would say, major achievement for us, okay, but just always put in perspective that uh, we were starting from ground zero. Do you really believe that biocomputing is the future of data processing, is the future of computing? Yes, absolutely. Uh, s specifically for one type of computing, okay? Computing of AI. Okay, like quantum computing may be restricted to some, some types of computing, Biocomputing will be restricted also to some task of computing. But AI is absolutely perfect for an obvious reason. AI is based on simulations of neurons. 